So let us talk about mobile jammers today. And in this, uh, we are going to see what is uh, mobile jammer. There's some history and how mobile jammer works, uh, the jamming techniques, the design parameters and specifications, and the block diagram, the power supply, the type of jammer devices, application, and future scope of this technology. Now, what is a mobile jammer? Mobile jammer is an instrument uh, which is used to prevent cellular phones from receiving signals from base station. Actually, what happens, you have a device which is called as mobile or cell phone or a smartphone. Now, it gets a signal from some base station. You might have seen those towers. Mobile jammer does what? It prevents these cellular phones from getting signals. So it is a device that transmits signals on the same frequency at which this GSM system operates. So this frequency is same. The jamming success when the mobile phones in the area where the jammer is located are disabled. So let us see the history. Mobile jammer was actually uh, developed originally by law enforcement and military to interrupt communication by criminals and terrorists. Uh, some were also designed to foil the use of certain remotely detonated uh, explosive. So how does it work? A jamming device, this is a jamming device. Now it transmits same radio frequency, these are the uh, areas, same frequencies of greater power. The power of what the signals are, it sends signals with greater power, disrupting the communication between the phone and the cell phone base station. So if this is a cell phone, this is a cell tower, means this is the station you can say. This is a jamming device. Now when these two are talking, there is a jamming device. The frequency with which they are talking, this jamming device sends the frequency with extra enough power to disrupt it. This is uh, also called as a denial of service attack, denial of service attack. Now this causes interference with communication of cell phones and tower to render the phones unusable. So when most uh, phone, the network would be out of range. You know, when you will call, it will, uh, you know, give a message that the phone are out of range. For example, this is a base station. This is a jamming area. And this is distance from the antennas. This is the power output. So signals are disrupted. So jammers can work either way, that is by disrupting phone to tower frequency or tower to phone frequency. There are various jamming techniques, type A device, B, C, D, E. Type A are jammers, type B are intelligent cellular disablers, C are intelligent beacon disablers, type D are direct receive and transmit jammers, and type E, EMI shield or passive jamming. EMI is electromagnetic interference. So let us uh, see this type A device jammers. This type of device comes equipped with several independent oscillators transmitting jamming signals. We have several independent oscillators transmit this jamming signals capable of blocking frequency used by paging devices or cellular devices as well as those used by cellular system control channels for call establishment. Then a type B or intelligent cellular disablers, what it does, uh, type B devices do not transmit an interfering signal. They do not do that on the control channels. The device when located in a designated quiet area it functions as a detector. So it has a unique identification number for communicating with the cellular base station. This is how intelligent uh, cellular disablers are uh, working. Then we have type C device that is intelligent beacon disablers. Type C uh, devices do not transmit again interference signals on the control channel. The device, this device when located in a 
designated quiet area quiet area where, where it is not required to be to have a talk or a communication so it functions as a beacon and any compatible terminal is instructed to disable its ringer or disable its operation while within the coverage area of a beacon okay these are intelligent beacon beacon disablers then we have direct receive and transmit jammers so this jammer behave like a small independent and portable base station itself which can directly interact intelligently or rather unintelligently with the operation of the local mobile phone so they have the jammer is predominantly in receive mode and will intelligently choose to interact and block the cell phone directly if it is within close proximity of the jammer so it this jammer can directly receive and transmit uh, the communication uh, frequency and data the type e device that is emi shield or passive jamming this technique is use, uh, using emi suppression technique to make room into which is called as faraday cage so although labor intensive to construct the faraday cage essentially blocks or greatly attenuates virtually all electromagnetic radiation that is why we have this electromagnetic uh, interference shield from this uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation from entering or leaving the cage or in this case a target room this is a uh, basic uh, black uh, block diagram this is power supply uh, if section and rf section and these are the jamming signals this is how power supply is transformer you have a rectifier and filter and the regulator these are or there for a jammer uh, the block diagram this is the actual figure this is the actual mobile jammer you can see these are sort of antennas to receive and send the signals and uh, you know uh, there are few jammer devices also like uh, type of cell phone jammer device uh, specifically we are talking about this so there are many types of cell phone jammer device which is used in our daily life as you take an example of classroom where we do not want you you know student to use cell phone that we can use cell phone jammer device so by this we can produce an interference uh, between the cell phone and the base station and cell phone so resulting it disconnect the cell from base station and we cannot receive the uh, any call from the base station for this there are many types of cell phone jammer devices which are as given these are remote control mobile jammer adjustable mobile jammer uh, school and prison mobile jammer exclusion proof mobile jammer police and military mobile jammer portable mobile jammer so these are specifically the mobile jammers so what are the applications of this jammer first of all to maintain silence in any area where silence is required like library and lecture hall to avoid uh, fraud in uh, examination hall to avoid disturbance in classroom to provide security in business conference board of director rooms and seminars and for providing calm and peace atmosphere in the hospitals and church mosque cathedral or religious area you don't want mobile to be ringing always that is why you have a mobile jammer here what is the future scope of this jamming technology Uh, while the law clearly clearly prohibits using a device to actively disrupt a cell phone signal so again jamming is is a sort of prohibition which is used so there are no rules against passive cell phone blocking but um, you know military and all those uh, with area where threats are there you know government can give permission and companies are working on devices that control a cell phone but do not jam the signal thank you so much hope you understand the idea this i conclude by saying that every technology has a good aspect as well as a bad aspect the important thing is how we use it and cell phone jammers are very useful to the society and from the anti social elements so we can save our people leaders we can restrict communication networks between anti social element by using wild jammers and cell phone jammers prevent the student from carrying cell phones to the colleges because the college is for study not uh, for using mobile because mobile can be used in lunch time or any other time thank you so much take care